The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. everybody and welcome to the happiness jungle tv show with yours truly the chief happiness officer of the happiness jungle me lindy eldridge i am beyond excited today to share with you there are so many of you that are sitting on the couch wanting to know how can you literally become more known in the world you've got a certain craft you've got a certain uniqueness about you and we are constantly hearing how videos are becoming very contagious in our world. Social media is helping you become more than you ever imagined, but you're kind of stuck. You really just don't know how to go ahead and take advantage of video marketing. Well, I was able to get in the studio today with me, Megan Corson, and she is a video marketing guru and she's going to teach us tips she's going to share with us exactly what you need to do to be able to get yourself out there so you could share your very special message that you know you have so that's what today's show is all about i hope you have a pen and paper and always remember that today's show is all about helping you become everything that you want to become you may know somebody that is looking to take advantage of videoing themselves make sure that you share this episode and this show with them of the happiness jungle so without further ado please help me welcome megan corson to our show hello megan hey thank you so much for having me here i'm really excited to share with all of you really useful information on video marketing and how to be great in front of the camera wow well you know what you are so beautiful you are so well put together your colors and everything your hair your eyes your <laughs> smile Everything that you're going to teach us, I know, has to do with how to present yourself properly in front of the camera. How do I look? You look great. I love the way your hair and makeup is pops, and right. you definitely have a distinct brand, which is always consistent, I notice, across your videos. And that's one thing that's so important. You have to be consistent. Yeah, let's talk about it right from the start. Because there are so many people out there today that realize that they don't need to go get an agent. They don't need to move to Hollywood, California to become known. And each one of us has a very unique message within us. And there are many of us that just want to learn how do we get started with getting our message out there. So I'm going to pass the, the camera over to you and I'm going to become your student because I'm excited. I know that you speak on many different platforms and I'm very blessed that I have the opportunity to have you in the studio today. So I'm taking myself out of it. <laughs> Share with us your knowledge. Be my teacher today. Well, it's a real pleasure to be here because my background is in TV news reporting. I started off as a reporter, so I have experience not only in front of the camera and behind the camera. So I really love helping people light up. So just being here with you reminds me of those news days. So it's really fun to just wow. have an excuse to just like have that interview conversation with someone in front of the camera and to be able to just play into that. So thank you again for making this possible for me. Wow. Where did you start off? I started off in a news station just south of Chicago with a CBS affiliate in a smaller town area called the Quad Cities. If any of you know, it's just south of Chicago. So you name it, I covered it from, you know, shootings and fires to train explosions and like the local county fair. <laughs> wow, how exciting. Now, did you go to school for that? Did you go to college to become a journalist and all that? Is I did, yes. I went to school for broadcast journalism at Emerson College right in Boston. Wow, okay. So right here in the New England area, I'm excited. We're going we're gonna to learn from somebody who went to school here. <laughs> wow, there's a lot of great talent that comes out of this New England area, and you're For just sure. one of them, right? Okay, so somebody wants to get started. They've got a message. 
definitely. So the first thing you want to decide with video is what is your goal with the video? Because again, you don't want to produce video for the sake of having video. You want to create it to work for you with your goals, whether you're trying to spread awareness on a passionate message you have, or you're trying to raise awareness of your business, you're trying to build followers or subscribers for your new blog you're launching, whatever your goal is or your, you know, primary goal is, you want to make video work for you because we have so much going on, our time is much too valuable to just produce video for the sake of video. So once you know exactly what you want to get out of the video, then you can move forward. And from whatever you do, if you're in business, I always say the top three videos that every business needs is you need an About Us video that shares your story, your personal story for people to connect with you. You need a testimonial video that's from your previous clients telling how amazing you are, your products or services, whatever value you offer people, you want to hear from other people sharing that value because then that bids your credibility. It makes it that much easier for someone to want to connect with you. And finally, you want an educational video because who doesn't like free information? Just like we're doing here right now, you're getting valuable information from this video and it's building those followers. Lindy is building your trust and your relationship mm -hmm. with you just by having me on this show. So again, you want an About Us video, a testimonial video, and an educational video to really get started with video in a powerful way. I love it. Some people think that they have to have a lot going on when they're doing a video. How do you feel about that? Some videos are so busy that the, the, the message is lost. And I'm kind of seeing that a lot. People think that they have to be like jumping up and down. What is your point of view on that? Well, I think you have to bring it back. What is your goal with the video? Are you looking to really be flashy? Is that part of your brand? Are you, are you known for lots of energy and action, things like that? Then it might make sense. But if you're someone that's more so conversational, straightforward, then it's better to take away those big bells and whistles. The focus is on you and your message. So minimizing distractions is very important. And again, keep it simple. Mm. If you're new with video, don't give yourself a whole slew of list of messages you want to share. Pick two or three points you want to make, and then that way you're going to set yourself up for success and make it that much easier for someone to listen to you and remember what you shared in that video. I love how you just share that because there are so many times we get so excited. We want to go ahead and we want to give the whole enchilada when if we will learn how to go ahead and just give one or two, it will be like a cliffhanger to leave it for more. When somebody's talking about themselves, because we talk about videos and how it's all about the person, how about their brand, but there comes that fine line where they shouldn't be talking about themselves so much because then it's a me, me, me show. When you talk about their story, how long should their story be? 30 seconds, a minute. How long should that story be? And how do they make it so it starts flowing into it's about others to invite? Definitely. I love how you mentioned about the concerns with the me, me, me kind of mm -hmm. show because, again, it really is all about the audience, just like you're having with this show here. Yeah. It's you're hosting the show. You're the consistent part of this these video series, but you're always reminding the people watching what value you're bringing them. So when you're putting together a message and sharing your life story about you or things like that, you're not sharing just about you. You're sharing what they want to hear about you. You just happen to be the subject. So a good rule of thumb is to keep it short. I would say most videos, again, it really depends on the purpose of the video, but if you can keep your video 60, 90 seconds, even shorter is even better, then that's a good way to kind of give yourself guidelines with video because, again, people's attention spans are short. That's why video is so powerful because it's really quick and easy for people to connect with you, get the message, and move on to whatever else they're looking on online. I love how you say that. I do, um, pretty, pretty faithfully, uh, motivated me one minute, 60 second videos. And there's a lot of information that you could give in one minute. It's like people don't realize when they watch a commercial on television, some of them are only 15 seconds, 30 seconds, or 60 seconds. Very few are 60 seconds. But boy, did they give us that message, right? So FaceTime is one of the best platforms that I could see that are getting people really engaging. So if somebody is doing a FaceTime video, how do they do that? Do they have to bring their whole computer with them? They have no idea how simple it is in today's world to create a video. 
what do we need to do that? Do I need to go out and buy an elaborate <laughs> camera? What is it that I need to do? Because I want to make sure that it's crisp, it's perfect, and everything is spot on. Well, I mean, and I'm on a tight budget. <laughs> well, you alluded to it. You really don't need to be an expert. You don't need to buy that amazing 4K HD camera. It really depends on what your goals are. If you're looking for something more cinematic and high end, mm -hmm. like TV studio like this, then you want those professional teams working with you. But it's different if you're looking for to do a FaceTime, Facebook Live, or even something for your video blog, a vlog. All you really need is this your That's cell phone. It. And what's fantastic about phones is that, one, you already have one anyways. Two, the technology is getting even better and better. I mean, my phone I purposely got because of this shoots 4K HD video. You can get amazing quality. And the one thing I recommend most people to get so that way you don't come off as an amateur with your phone is to get an external microphone you can plug in so that way not only does your video look mm. great, but then you sound crystal clear. Wow. So there's even a microphone that you could, as an attachment, can you get the, where can you get those? Can you get them anywhere? Should you order them off of Amazon? Because people are very confused that they need to go again into a, a camera professional store, because I don't. I don't even know if they exist anymore, to be honest <laughs> with you. It's pretty much all online, all online now. Yeah. So what's great is that, I mean, you can find anything on Amazon. I know personally the microphone that I use with my cell phone it just costs about fifteen dollars it really doesn't have to be expensive and it's great quality it's a wired camera it's more expensive if you want for example a wireless mic that just clips onto you and your phone doesn't have to be connected with you but really wired is kind of the best bet to go with anyways because then it's less to worry about less issues to potentially come up and it really just is a matter of picking a mic that works with your exact phone. So it's always listening of whether you have an Android, an iPhone, or what have you. Just make sure it's compatible with it. And make sure that you even use video apps that help enhance your video. Oh, so that way, cool. it turns your camera on your phone almost like a DSLR camera. Wow. There's that, a lot of things out there. It's amazing. It is amazing. OK. When you're looking at the camera, and I'm watching people create videos, but when they look at themselves in the camera and we're watching it, they're not looking at us. It's like they're looking over here when we're over here. There's a clue of how to do that. There's a trick, and it's really not a trick, <laughs> but it's a clue, and I want you to share that because I want everybody to realize that the number one thing when they're making a video is that they want to have the contact with their audience. So if I'm watching a video and that eye contact is somewhere else, I'm thinking to myself, how do I get that? And I try to even turn my phone, you know, what's the clue? The key is you need to look right into the lens of your camera. So for example, with your phone, you see the lens back here. And if you have it, for example, say if you have it on selfie mode, you have to look right into the lens of where the camera is, just like you would if you were taking a photo because the reason why it's so important, why I'm so glad that you brought it up, is that you want to create that virtual eye connection. We're not sitting here in person, but because I'm looking at the camera lens, we're looking at each other, you're watching the video screen, it feels like we're closer than we actually are. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important. Yeah, and, it's, and as if you're speaking with your audience, and they're engaging, and they could feel you. You know, it's amazing. Eye contact, whether it's in person or whether it's in video, is so pupil to pupil. You know, it's so powerful. So Definitely. That's... And the thing with video is that as easy it is to get started with video, it's a lot harder than it sounds to really become a natural to bring your personality in front of the camera because we know just by any of you watching this video right now is that video isn't a matter of if you use it, it's a matter of when. And because it's so necessary and because that trend of being authentic and getting to know personal brands is exploding, which I really love. You have to get in front of the camera, whether you like it or not. Your audience wants to get to know you. They want to get to know the people behind your business, behind your message, mm -hmm. and it makes it that much more powerful. So that's why it's important to feel comfortable in front of the camera and to work with someone. I personally will coach people on how to be comfortable in front of the camera and help them light up, use easy techniques here and there, and to really 
help yourself connect with your audience. So it really is important to work on that and practice. Mm -hmm. And you are the obvious expert. You are a consultant specifically for this topic. And boy, I've met some people that you have helped and I've watched their performance on video. And I'm like, my God, and it didn't <laughs> even take long. It's, I, I believe you're like a hands-on kind of a gal. When you're teaching, you know, you're not just telling, but you're showing and you're doing, right? Definitely, and I do that either one-on-one -on -one consulting work or with team trainings or even speaking at presentations at different conferences and events. It's really fun. I just love being able to interact with people, and I can't help but be hands-on. You kind of have to be because this is so personal. I understand that for people that it can be kind of intimidating going in front of the camera. Going in front of the camera lens is not natural, and that's totally fine. Everyone has different thresholds of where they're starting, and I love meeting people where they are and helping them achieve their goals. Again, I really am not just about helping you feel great in the front of the camera. I'm helping you get the results you want. Yeah. So let's say you're new with video and you have never gone in front of the camera and you just really want to just help you feel good in your own skin. That's a different goal and train of steps that I have to take with you versus someone who's been in front of the camera for a little bit and you're like, you know what? I really want to come off as that professional, almost like the platform is as if I was hosting 60 minutes. I really want to be super on point and command attention. Then that's a different place to start with and I take you to the appropriate steps to help you really achieve your goals with being successful in front of the camera. Oh gosh, I love that. <laughs> so many people want to do blogs and vlogging. Vlogging? Is that what it's called? Vlogging. It's so funny. <laughs> Vlogging, vlogging. <laughs> it just makes me laugh, you know. Vlogging. There are people that want to do vlogging. So share with us about vlogging. What is what are the secret steps to have a, sec a successful vlog? Well, the great thing about video is that it's meant to give you that taste of information. Mm -hmm. It catches someone's attention in a really, really easy way, and it makes it fun and easy for them to take in the information. So what I personally do for my blog is I'm not trying to replace text. Some people only do YouTube channels and, channels and only videos, and that's totally fine. But I understand that people think differently. So what I like to do is use a video to kind of use as a teaser for the whole detailed blog post. So you might share, again, one or two key points in your video and then direct people to your blog or to like your Facebook page, whatever your goal is, and then give them that extra information. I like to give people a short, 45 to 60 second, second blog post with the video and then give them a longer post of text that gives them more information. So that way, if they want a little information, they get what they need from the video. But if they want even more information, then they have the whole text for that. So they get everything they need. And the biggest mistake I see people make with not only vlogs or videos in general is that you must have a call to action at the end of the video. It's so important to give your audience that next step because they won't take that next step if you don't give it to them. As much as they love hearing you, they might love your products or services, they really connect with you. But if you want them to subscribe to your YouTube channel, then you need to ask them to because they will if they really resonate with it. But if you don't and they love your content, they won't necessarily know to because you haven't made it easy for them. Right. And you didn't tell them. You didn't give them direction. I'm guilty of that a lot of times. I get so excited with my message that I sometimes forget to give them the call to action. And then they'll PM me. I'm very lucky. At least they communicate with me, right? And they PM me. And they're like, but Lindy, this is what I want to do. I'm like, oh, duh. You know, go here, go here. And then I want to go back and I want to do the video. I want to talk about that. <laughs> when the video is off, the video is off. Don't, don't try to go back and, and correct, but know for the next time what to add, the call to action. Definitely. I mean, it's about just getting your feet What the video. Your first video is never going to be perfect, and that's totally fine. Right. Sometimes it's almost better that way because people want that authentic, that realness, yeah. and to feel like that you are really connected with them on a personal level and not trying to you know, be flashy or try to edit things in a way that doesn't feel true and resonates with them. So again, it's part of mapping out your video plan before you get started. So just remind yourself, what is your call to action for that video before you even hit play? I like that. I like that a lot. So understand your message, understand your posture. Let's go back to posture. Okay. Posture. You got to do a little bit more than just get out of bed, right? You have to. 
it's just like going out in the public. You always want to look the best that you can be. If you're doing a sloppy video, how serious can people really take you? And it doesn't take much. I mean, you don't even have to wear fabulous pants, right? Because if you're only videoing from the chest up, then make sure from the chest up is appropriate. If you're doing it from the waist, then make sure, right? So, sure, because there's a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> we can have a whole show just on that. <laughs> there is, there's a lot of behind the scenes, isn't there? And I want people to realize, because some people are saying, I got to go out, I've got to get this new suit. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Are you thinking about portraying yourself, you know, what, what angle? Like on our show here, I let all of my guests know that you can wear pajama bottoms because we literally love to record just from the waist up because we're sitting in a very, ca in a very casual setting unless we're doing something else that's very interactive. So a lot of people, they're so funny. I had one gentleman come, and he literally wore his pajama pants. It was hilarious. And I said, that, that's all right. You, you could do that. I want people to feel comfortable, but I also want them to feel uncomfortable. Because if you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing, and you're not stepping out of that comfort zone. So share with us. Should they be practicing a little bit in the mirror? What, what, you know, what should they do? What, what should their, their pretend audience be? I mean, I've used my dog, my cat. I've used my couch, you know, but I've always had a mirror so I could watch my actions, right? Because some of our facial expressions that we think are cute, they're not so cute. <laughs> <laughs> you always have to not only um, create your video with purpose, but whatever word choice you make or the movements you have of using your hands, your eyebrows, whatever way you're trying to connect with the audience, you want to do it with purpose. So it's about being mindful. When you plan out that video, you're thinking about what messages do you want to hit and don't overwhelm yourself too much and think about what outfit do you want to wear? What would you wear if you were connecting with your audience in person? Bring that into play. So for example, let's say if you were a local auto repair mechanic and you want to put together some how-to videos of how to change your oil at home or how to know that you need new air in your tires or when your tires are bolting, you want to give some how-to educational videos. Well, it'd be pretty odd if you were wearing a full-blown suit and tie, right? That they wouldn't be able to match it with your message. Like, oh, like a mechanic would never wear a full nice suit. But if you wore your jumpsuit, what you people would see with you at your place of business, then that makes sense. So you want to make sure that the way you dress and present yourself matches with your message. Let's say if you were a, you know, fitness, health nutritionist person, it would make sense for you to wear athletic wear because that's your realm of expertise and people would be expecting that from you. Now, if I wore workout gear, that would be pretty odd because that doesn't fit with what I'm sharing with you. So I purposely pick solid colors and jewel tones because those are some key tips that I give people of how to keep it easy for dressing for the camera and looking great in all different lighting. So I always kind of, it's kind of making sure that you are living and breathing what you teach. So that's why it's that important for to have your clothes to match your message. And then when you are ready to go in front of the camera, practice it here and there. But I would say do not memorize a script. It comes off as robotic. And I mean, when I was in the news world, we read teleprompters, but it's a lot harder than it looks to make it sound natural. So don't put that extra work on yourself because you're just giving yourself more stress that's completely unnecessary. And your audience will feel it because they can just feel that and pick it up in your voice and the way you present yourself. So just make it as easy as possible. Think about your message, think about what you're wear, make sure it matches your message, and then practice it a few times. And again, when you record your video, it doesn't have to be live. You can take your phone and record 20 times and then post it on YouTube. They don't have to know how many times it took. Perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Thumbnails. When they're posting the video, we're running out of time, I can't believe it. Thumbnails, and what a thumbnail is, it's that beginning um, visual that people see when they're looking at your video. So if they go to the YouTube channel, you usually have one frame that really introduces that video. Let's talk about that real quick. Because some people's thumbnails, they don't even understand that first of all, and how they should really properly set up their video for viewing to make it attractive and make people go, oh my God, I really want to see that and click it. 
Definitely. So the easiest way to set up your thumbnail, it's most common with YouTube. It's just a matter of when you upload your video to select it. So what I recommend people to is to create a whole separate image or graphic for just that piece. Sometimes you can take a screenshot of your video itself if you want to show you live in action and then have the text that match what your message is. It's good to have text in your thumbnail, at the least your website name or whatever that staple message that you want people to resonate with because they're going to read it before they click the play button. Mm. Make it easier for them to know what they're clicking on and confirming that they are clicking on the video that they're looking for. So again, just make sure you have an image for your thumbnail because it's better than choosing a whatever the image options that it gives you within the video because chances are, the still frame that they are, it's middle of you speaking won't look as great as if you took a picture of yourself, a headshot you might have, and then some text next to it will look, look a lot more polished. And then just set up your video for success. It'll give them that feeling that they're looking for before they even watch it. I love it. I love it. I know that your clients could be from all over the world. I know that to be true. Let our audience know how they can get a hold of you. Definitely, if you'd love to learn how to map out your video strategy and to feel confident in front of the camera, you can connect with me. My website is www.megancorson.com. That's spelled M-E-A-G-H-A-N-C-O-R-S-O-N. And I welcome you to check out my blog, megancorson.com slash blog. I love giving lots of useful information on how to be successful in front of the camera, even more information on those top three videos I shared with you earlier, and how to feel calm in front of the camera, how to really own an interview like this, and tons of tips and tricks of how to network with video, and even how to just really take advantage of using video for events in tons of different ways. So again, mm -hmm. if you're looking to map out your video strategy and really make video work for you, instead of you feeling like you're just cranking them out, then reach out to me. And if you're looking to really take your um, comfort with video to the next level, reach out to me. I love speaking at events to help educate your audience on the topics, as well as working with teams in one-on-one. -on -one. And she's amazing. As you can see, I'm sitting at the edge of my seat. I don't even want this to be over. I also want our viewers to look for you on Facebook, because I love your Facebook page. Posture is everything. And when you're looking to work with somebody, the best way to really get to know who they are sometimes is to go ahead and um, look at their Facebook feed. And I love what you're all about. I'm so thrilled that I've asked you to come on the show. I'm so thrilled that you accepted the offer. We never said that life was easy, but we did say you can't be happier. And video marketing is the way to go. And I urge you, and I, I absolutely contagiously invite you to go ahead and reach out to Megan and make your videos pop. Say bye, Megan. Thank you so much for having me, Lindy. And I look forward to hearing from you all. Oh, my God. There you go, everybody. Megan Corson. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.